Looking at our chapter 16, acids and bases, what I would call the most troublesome problems from our round one testing, I wanted to offer an opportunity to work some of those most missed problems with you. This should help out with your test corrections and moving along to your practice test B for the objectives you will need to retest. Our first most missed question, to calculate the molar concentration of hydroxide ions in a .055 molar solution of hydrazine. The clue here that it is acting as a base is seeing the hydroxide ions and being asked to calculate their concentration. Hydrazine can be found on your KB chart using your appendix D. Its formula, written as H2NNH2, being placed into water, setting up an equilibrium that generates base ions and the protonated conjugate of the original hydrazine. The reason this one I believed was tricky is that this nitrogen in the first position and the nitrogen in the second position both are basic nitrogens. Remember how we stressed in our note pack that nitrogen acts as a Lewis acceptor of electrons or a proton. So here when I think about forming the ions both nitrogens receive a proton, making the fact that we needed two waters to balance that and leaving two hydroxide ions, those are the waters, now missing their proton. This equation shows one molecule of hydrazine accepting a proton onto each of their nitrogens, forming what we call a Zwitter ion, H3N carrying a positive on the first nitrogen and H3 carrying yet another positive on the second nitrogen. We know that the initial concentration of the concentration of hydrazine, 0.055 molar, and 0, 0 for the initial here. Knowing that at equilibrium, we'd have a value of X for the protonated hydrazine ion, and a value of 2X for the value here of both hydroxides. And at equilibrium, we'd have 0.055 minus x as the concentration left in solution of the original hydrazine. Kb is an expression that shows products over reactants. The product is H3N and H3, both carrying a positive charge, times the hydroxide ion Knowing that the coefficient becomes the power with respect to that, it must be squared, set over the original concentration of H2N and H2. The expression shows that the coefficient in front of hydroxide must be used when calculating the Kb. We looked up using Appendix D the Kb value for hydrazine and found it to be 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6. The concentration of the protonated hydrazine ion we establish as the value of X. The concentration of the hydroxide ion we establish to be the value of 2X, but that must be squared with respect to that coefficient from our protonated equation. I'll set over the value of 0 0.055, and I'll assume the 5% rule and not subtract the X. I cross-multiplied and simplified for my equation. I found 7.2 times 10 to the negative eighth is now equal to 4x cubed, cross-multiplying and simplifying the top. 1.8 times 10 to the negative eighth is now the value of x cubed, and taking the cube root of x, I find 2.62 times 10 to the negative three molar units as the value of x. Keep in mind, we were asked to solve for hydroxide ions. X represented the ion for the protonated hydrazine. The value of 2X represented the concentration of hydroxide. So I need to double what I found for the value of X, and when I find that, it's 0 .00524 molar, the concentration of hydroxide. Using this value, we can also calculate the pH of our solution. Since it is a hydroxide concentration, taking the negative log of 0 .00524 molar, 
gives us something called the pOH. And when I take 14 minus that, I can find my pH value. And when I hit, I find 11.72 as the pH of the base called hydrazine.